Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We are still in chapter 10, and now we're going to go to chapter 10.4, which deals with changes of state. So what are some common ones? Some common ones that we can think about are condensation and vaporization. These are opposing processes. Melting and freezing, again, opposing processes, and sublimation and deposition opposing processes. And here is a picture of the hydrologic or water cycle where you see vaporization and condensation and there's sublimation going on and there might be some deposition taking place. So again, um, these are some common ones that we're familiar with. So when we talk about phase changes, it's important to understand what we mean by phase. We learned this at the beginning of the year in chapter two, a phase is any part of the system that has uniform composition and properties. So for instance, if you had a peanut butter sandwich, no jelly, uh, there would be a peanut butter phase, there would be a bread phase, and the peanut butter phase should be uniform as should the bread phase. And sometimes when you have phase changes taking place, an equilibrium is established if you have a closed system. And that is a dynamic condition where two opposing changes are occurring at equal rates. And a few slides from now, I'll show you what I mean by that. So with phase changes, let's look at the first two, condensation, which is the process by which a gas changes to a liquid. And remember that a gas that is in contact with its solid or liquid phase is referred to as a vapor. And then we have the process of vaporization, and that is the general term used for the change from a liquid to its gas phase. And vaporization may occur at temperatures below the boiling point. So vaporization takes place, and that's, for instance, why if you have a puddle of water on your counter and you come back two days later, the puddle is gone. It never boiled, but it changed from liquid to gas. So now about this equilibrium. As I said, um, if you have a closed system, after some time, the amount of particles in that bottle, for instance, a bottle of water in a closed system, there will be vaporization taking place and condensation taking place. And when the rate of evaporation or vaporization equals the rate of condensation, you have an equilibrium reached. And so here is a water bottle and if it's a warm day, what's going to happen is some of the water is going to be evaporating and vaporizing. And after time, it will start condensing at the top of the bottle and dripping back in. And so because the cap is on, at some point, the rate of evaporation will equal the rate of condensation. And that will be our so-called dynamic equilibrium. So continuing with phase changes, there's melting, the process by which a solid changes to a liquid. And there's freezing, the reverse of this, and that's the process by which a liquid changes to a solid, also referred to as fusion. And if you think about both condensation and um, vaporization and melting and freezing, the difference is if heat is being absorbed, you would change from solid to liquid. Is if heat was being released, you would be changing back from liquid to solid. And continuing on with our phase changes, sublimation is the process by which a solid changes directly to a gas, and that means it does not go through a liquid state, so that's sublimation. And then deposition is the reverse of this process by which a gas goes directly to a solid without going through a liquid phase. So sublimation, my example is, if you've ever noticed um, ice cubes in your freezer, if you go away on vacation and come home, the ice cubes will have seemed to shrink. And what happens is they've gone directly from solid to gas. My example of deposition is sometimes on a cold night, the water vapor that is in our air will go directly from gas to solid and form frost on a cold surface. So that is an example of sublimation and deposition. And there is um, 
an example of sublimation taking place. This would be dry ice, uh, which is solid carbon dioxide, and you can see it subliming. And again, there's my frost example. So a phase diagram is a diagram that we use to represent the phases of a substance as a function of temperature and pressure. And here is a phase diagram for water. And what I like to point out is with phase diagrams, they always have pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. And what this is showing is where they are in relation, the phases of this substance, in this case water, in relation to pressure and temperature. And the solid phase is always against the y-axis. The gas phase is always along the x-axis. And the liquid phase is in the middle, so solid, liquid, and gas. So there are some useful pieces of information that you can get uh, from the phase diagram. Those are the critical point and the triple point, and I will define those now. So the phase diagram gives you, for instance, a critical temperature, which is the highest temperature at which the solid and liquid phases can exist. Beyond the critical temperature, you're only going to find that substance as a gas. It also gives you the critical pressure, which corresponds to the pressure required to liquefy a gas at the critical temperature. And again, it's the pressure needed to turn a gas into a liquid. When would that be useful? Well, if you have a, for instance, gas grill in your house, in your patio, the gas, propane, is liquefied. So it's important to know the critical pressure and temperature so that they can get the propane into the tank as a liquid. So the critical point is the temperature and pressure above which a substance may only exist as a gas. So again, the substance cannot exist in the solid or liquid phase above this critical point, and there is a temperature and pressure associated with that point. So the critical point, uh, the critical temperature and pressure for water is 374 degrees C and 218 atmospheres. And when you consider that our standard atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, that's a fairly significant pressure. You are not responsible to memorize that, by the way. So here is my phase diagram for water, and I'm going to point some things out. So there is the triple point, the point at which all three phases touch solid, liquid, and gas can coexist. Then there is the critical point, that is the point beyond which it may only exist as a gas. And then we have these lines between solid, liquid, liquid gas, and solid and gas. And so the point where they touch is where the phase change would take place. So for instance, if you wanted to know at a given pressure where a substance would melt or freeze, you could look on a phase diagram and read that. So where solid touches liquid all along this line, so all along these various pressures and temperatures, melting is taking place if it's absorbing energy, freezing if it's releasing energy. And then we have the point where liquid meets gas all along this line, and that would be if it's absorbing energy where boiling or vaporization is taking place, and where if it's cooling down, where condensation would take place. And then finally, the sublimation deposition line, so the line that separates solid from gas. If it's absorbing energy, it would be subliming, changing from solid to gas. And if it is releasing energy, it would be going from gas to solid, and deposition would be taking place. And just for comparison, I want to show you what the phase diagram looks like for carbon dioxide, and this would be dry ice. So what I wanted to point out is here is the triple point, the point where solid, liquid, and gas can take place or can coexist for carbon dioxide, and that is at negative 56.6 degrees C and a pressure of 5 atmospheres. So for our lives, where we normally are um, operating, which is at 1 atm, 
carbon dioxide is going to exist as a gas. And if you have a sample of dry ice and you're at around room temperature, which is like 20, 25 degrees C, you would see that it would very, very quickly change from solid to gas. So that is Ms. Augustine with my notes for you about phase diagrams and uh, phase changes. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.